All right, here we go. Here is your homework. So this will be for section 11.3. All right, so only one shape today, just trapezoids. We're going to prove the formula for area, and then I'll show you some examples, and that'll be it. One objective, 11.5 is going to be the area of the trapezoid. All right, recall that a trapezoid, we had this in the previous chapter, is a four-sided figure, so it's quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. That means two of the sides are parallel to each other. Um, yes, typically we put the bottom and the top to be the parallel sides, but it doesn't have to be. So in this case, a four-sided figure and side AB is parallel to side DC, therefore it is a trapezoid. And um, usually they have in the definition have the word exactly one set of opposite sides parallel. So remember, if you would have two sets of opposite sides parallel, then it would be a parallelogram. All right, uh, the two sides that are parallel, we call the bases. It doesn't matter which one is the base one or base two. It's just that the two parallel sides are called bases. Uh, and then the other two, oh, I'm sorry, the distance between the two bases is defined as the height and remember that distance is always measured perpendicularly. And then lastly, the uh, other two sides would be called the legs. And there's not like leg one, leg two. They're just called legs. Uh, that's all recall from previous lessons. Uh, lastly, this. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, typically the bottom one we call base one and the top one base two. But it could we could flip it sideways or the, the two could be flipped around. We also have two special kinds of um, trapezoid. One is called a right trapezoid. I'm going to annotate right here. Um, just because one side is listed as right, well, remember the other side would be right as well, or the other angle, uh, the side that is uh, the uh, um, consecutive angle to it would be right as well too. Uh, they will only ever mark one of those as being right, but both of them are right. Uh, and then we have one last kind of special uh, trapezoid, and that is an isosceles trapezoid, and that's when the two uh, legs are congruent as well. So if the two legs are congruent, isosceles, and the other special one is right, and the other two are just, just plain Jane trapezoids. Uh, last note, and I've already made this before, is that you can flip base one and base two around. Let me see. There we go. You can flip base one and base two around, and it doesn't really matter. Just pick one. One of the parallel sides is base one. One of the parallel sides is base two. Okay, so that's all the background knowledge for trapezoid. And now let's move on to the uh, formula, which uh, formula for area. And, and most students can't remember the formula for area. They know it's that more complicated one. Uh, but I'm going to prove it right now. So here we go. Here's the proof. Uh, the proof is going to state that the uh, take the two bases, add them together, multiply by the height, and then divide that answer by two, and that is what the height will be, uh, but we will prove that. All right, as always, it's high school geometry. You're trying to prove something that probably involves a triangle, so let's make a triangle. You may, may say, hey, look, there's already a triangle right there with the height. But remember, that's an imaginary line, the height there. Let's, let's literally make a uh, two triangles. Now, I could cut the trapezoid from A to C or D to B. Uh, either way would work. I'm going to choose uh, to cut it from D to B. Uh, so I'm going to um, make a diagonal that uh, cuts it, uh, the uh, trapezoid. Now, I can't say it cuts it in half. Uh, if it was a isosceles trapezoid uh, or, 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 or maybe even a right one, you know, there's a chance that I could be cutting it in half. But I think you can look at those two triangles and state and say that they don't look like one is half of the other. So I'm not going to claim that I'm cutting it, the, the, the trapezoid in half, but I am claiming I'm making a diagonal. Now, I've made two basic triangles there, even though you may see a bunch. And I'll outline the two that I'm talking about in blue. I'm talking about this triangle right here. And in green, uh, this triangle right here. So I'm talking about these two triangles right there. All right, so let's say something about those two triangles. Well, from the previous day, we have the formula that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So that's what I'm going to say. So the, well, I'll call it the bottom triangle, the one that's uh, ADB or ABD. That, let's see, one half base times height would be one half times the base, which is base one times the height. And well, the height is listed as the height, so H. So that would be my first area of my first triangle. So I'll state that right there. Uh, and then the... Uh, 
second triangle, uh, I just wrote a statement there that remember that the entire shape is made up of the two triangles added together. That Remember, that's postulate 19. So let's get back to the area. So let's see, I've just stated the area of this triangle right here in green will be one half base one times the height. And now let's think about the other triangle, this triangle that is right here. Let's see, what is the base? Well, I guess we could call base two the height, the base two the base. Uh, well, what is the height of that triangle? Well, let's see, in uh, red here. Uh, well, the height would be the distance from B uh, perpendicular to the other side. Uh, I would have to extend this side right here. We normally we would do that with dot dashed or dotted lines, but notice, uh, I'm gonna draw an arrow here in blue, that these two measurements right here they would actually be the same. Why would they be the same? Because base one and base two are parallel to each other. Definition of parallel lines are lines that are equidistant. So therefore any point along the two bases uh, that's perpendicular to each other that would have to maintain the same distance. All right, so I can now say that the area of the second triangle will be one half base two times the same height. So that's what I'm gonna state right there. So that's that mess that I have written right there. So the area of the uh, trapezoid, which is broken up into two triangles, would be uh, one half base one times the height plus one half base two times the height. And that's just the area of a triangle. And the fact that parallel lines uh, maintain the same distance between them. Notice both, both of those terms right there. I'll circle them. This term and this term right here both have a one half and an h in them, so all I would have to do is divide that expression by one half h, divide out the one half h, right, that part right there in red, uh, and if I did that, then therefore I would factor it, and I would be left with the formula that we wanted from the start, which is the error of a trapezoid is one half times h times the quantity, that's special keywords for parentheses, base one plus base two. So write that one down. That is our theorem of today. There's only one theorem. Theorem 11.5 that states that if you have a trapezoid with base one and base two as their ba two parallel sides, then the area of that um, trapezoid is one half times the height times the quantity base one plus base two. All right, uh, a lot of people with a calculator, when they do this, they would rather do this particular formula. It's the same formula. The height times the two bases added together divided by two would be the same thing. Okay, so in uh, eighth grade, when you had uh, equations like this or, or, or examples like this where you have a trapezoid and they're just gonna hand you that information they're gonna hand you something that gives you both bases and it gives you the height. And therefore it's just a plug and chug type calculations where you plug in the two heights or plug in the two bases, multiply by the height and then divide by two. But since we're in high school and high school geometry, they're gonna make it much, much, much more challenging. But let's do this one first. So here's your eighth grade example. Let's see, the bases are the two parallel sides. So that would be eight and 12. Let's see, I gotta add eight and 12, that would be 20. I got to multiply 20 times seven, that'd be 140, and 140 divided by two is 70. And remember, area is always in square units. So there you go. Now let's look at what our problem is going to look like. So this is a geometry example. So notice there is no picture. It tells us a specific type of trapezoid, and one of those special ones. It says an isosceles. That means the two legs are equal. Uh, it tells us the two bases. And it tells us the legs. Remember, if it's isosceles, both legs would be the same. So if I were to draw this generic one right here, uh, I'm just making a sketch here. I'm not claiming that they're literally 6 and 10. Uh, I'm just labeling them uh, with those dimensions. Okay, so let's see. What are we missing? Well, we're missing the height. The height isn't labeled. So somehow with that given information, we need to calculate the height. Uh, many different ways of doing this. This is what would what strikes me as the best way. Um, since it's isosceles, right? And there's our, our formula. I have both bases, so I could plug those numbers in. I need to calculate the height. So since it's isosceles, uh, well, that would be the height right there that's labeled in red. And if I 
I don't know, I dropped a perpendicular straight down from the other side. Well, how long would that red line be? And since, remember, uh, parallel lines, their distance between them never changes, so it would also be height. Now, what can you tell me about those two triangles, uh, the two small ones I just made? Well, they're congruent. Why are they congruent? They're right. And um, by hypotenuse leg, the legs are five. I'm sorry, the hypotenuse are five and the legs are H. So by hypotenuse leg, those are the same. So that means that if this was labeled X, well, then by CPCTC, the other side would be X as well. And I can go further because look at the dimensions there. The top base is six and the bottom one is 10. That only leaves a, a value of four. And since both of those small pieces are labeled X, they're equal to each other, uh, uh, cut four in half, and that would give us the value two. Why did I go through all this trouble? Because I'm trying to calculate the height and now look at either one of those tiny triangles right there, left or the right one. I have two of the three sides. Therefore, hopefully it already struck you of what to do here. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find the, the third side. Let's see, the setup would be the, the hypotenuse is five. So five squared will be equal to two squared plus H squared. And then simply solve that. So let's see, 25 and 4, subtract 4 from both sides, and then take the square root. Now, not a very nice, pretty answer, right? But it is the, the answer, square root of 21. So that's our value for h. Now go back to the original equation, and the height is the square root of 21. 6 plus 10 is 16, so that would be 16 times root 21 divided by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Final answer 8 root 21 square units. Okay, so a couple more uh, high school examples here. Uh, recall that we had that one theorem. This is not part of this chapter, but in chapter five, we had, we had trapezoids. We had this following theorem that stated that if you can uh, be handed the median of a trapezoid, the, the, that median right there, mn, is equal to the sum of the two uh, parallel sides added together and divided by two. Uh, and then we also uh, what, uh, had the statement that all three of those, SR, MN, and PQ are parallel. Those were the two so what's from this theorem right here. I'm going to concentrate on the second one there, that MN, MN for median, uh, is equal to the top and the bottom, SR and PQ added together. So the two parallel sides added together divided by two. Now keep that in the back of your mind just for a couple seconds. Um, well, if I were to put better names to it from what we just stated about the, the trapezoids, well, the two parallel sides are called the bases. So I literally could have them. Now, this is not what you had uh, in chapter five, but now that since I've told you the bases are going to be called B1 plus B or B1 and B2, we can call PQ and SR by more descriptive names as bases. Where am I going with it? So I'm going to take that bottom equation right there, the one that says median. And I'm going to, uh, that's the hey, I'm going to uh, apply that to what we just wrote right here. Now, if you remember, there was that second uh, formula right there. I said that most people use the calculator. And look what's sitting right there. Uh, well, there's the formula we, I just remind you of for median. And notice right there in red, those are exactly the same. So I could replace what's written there in red with the word median. And we arrive at a second formula, a true second formula for area of a trapezoid. Now, this one we would only use if we actually had the height and the median. Uh, but if you did have the height and median, then it's just two numbers multiplied together. So all this is part of a uh, theorem 11.5, both the normal formula for area of a trapezoid and the, we'll call it the median formula for area of a trapezoid. So what would an example of this one look like? Oh, yeah, uh, this is kind of crazy. It's, it's just two numbers multiplied together. Well, if you're lucky, they give you the median, the height. Uh, it's just two um, numbers multiplied together uh, divided by two. So it would be 12 times 20 divided by two. Oh, well, that's not challenging at all. That would just be, um, let's see, uh, 20 divided by uh, two is 10, and 10 times, I'm sorry, 20, uh, 12 times 20 is 240, and I'm not dividing by 2. I was thinking of the other formula. So it's just 12 times 20. 
All right. Uh, it could be a little bit more challenging. They might give you something like this. So this is just a little algebra problem. It's the same basic idea, just with some algebra here. So let's see. What is the median of a trapezoid whose area is 300 square inches and whose height is 10? So this time I've given the area. That we're trying to solve for height. So I need a formula for trapezoid, an area that has the height in it. Well, this one has the height in it. Uh, let's see, area is 300, so 300 would be equal to the height, which is 10 times the median. So we can easily solve for the median, divide both sides by 10, and we get 30. And the, the units here are inches. M for median is a little uh, uh, a bad variable to use there because also I'm give you the impression that's meters. Uh, could they get more challenging? Heck, yes, they could. They could definitely be more challenging. Here's probably the most challenging one of the day. All right, let's see. What is the height and median of a trapezoid whose bases are 27.9 and whose area is 90 square inches? Uh, okay, so they're giving me two bases and they're giving me the area and I need to find the height and the median. So we have two formulas for area. There's your first one. And the second one is height times median. And I don't have the, I don't have the height or the median. So I'm going to have to use this formula to start off with. And at least I could solve for height here. And then maybe I can uh, calculate median from that information. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, I got my two bases. That's 27 and 9. So toss those in. Let's see. That would be 36 divided by 2, which would be 18. And if I divide both sides by 18, I'm going to get to 5. So I've got my height. Now I just need the median. Well, we got a median formula. We just used it. It says uh, area is equal to height times median. And now I have the height. And I also have the area. So I could, I could write that equation fairly quickly, divide both sides by 5. And I could get to 18. And I do want to point one thing out to you. Now, if, if we look at the original or our original problem, the one that we just did right here, if you were paying attention and really thinking it through, this is this is median right here. And well, we calculated that. It was actually listed right here. Could draw, darn you. Um, it was listed right here. There we go, which was 18. So yes, you can redo this calculation again that we did right here. But we didn't have to because we already knew that the median was eight. I'm sorry that the um, if the median was was uh, uh, calculated in the previous one or it was hidden in the previous calculation, it was eighteen. Okay, there we go. Um, there is a table here. We've done the tables enough. Um, that you should have good control over it. Just remember, they follow a similar pattern where the first couple ones, they give you um, all the information you need. You just need to plug it into the formula. Then they start erasing one thing. It turns into an algebra problem. And lastly, they throw in some variable expressions or maybe some square roots in. Uh, you should be okay with that. Uh, 19 through 21 uh, are gonna either involve a little bit of trig or maybe some uh, special right triangles. So be ready for that. And I believe that will do it for today. If you have any questions, as always, email me. And if not, well, then I'll see you next class.